Well, excellent. Hello, everybody. My name is Pram. There's Matt over there. And today, I'm here to talk to you about the uni bait. If you're a student, you're broke. Okay, let's face it. And uh, once you pass your exams, all your notes and essays, they're useless. So, and also, uh, some people need additional help in order to do as well in exams. So by providing an online marketplace for students to buy and sell their notes and resources, we can help unlock the value of these otherwise useless materials and also transfer them from people who don't need them to those who do. So here's some basic pictures of our product so far. The process is pretty simple. You make your notes, you upload your notes, and then uh, some cartoon girl downloads them. <laughs> so everybody buys online, but we hit the streets to find out exactly how many people would be interested in joining this service. So approximately 90% of students would be potential customers of the Unibay. So how do we make money? This is the fun part. By taking a percentage from each sale and also taking a minimum transaction fee. Also, we can sell products ourselves, such as stationery, and even incorporate affiliate marketing if necessary. 60 million pounds. Did I get your attention? Good. Because with 2 million students in the UK spending 300 pounds per annum on study resources, our market size is in fact 600 million pounds. And we intend to be the number one platform for students to buy and sell resources. So how do we grow? We intend to follow Facebook's growth and become 160 billion in five years. <laughs> We're actually going to follow their cluster growth model. So uh, we start off in one university and then expand to other ones as we reach saturation. We can also diversify the products that are, al that are allowed to be sold on the website, so incorporate textbooks as well. So marketing is a key point to the Unibay. We can take into account student unions and also uh, student discount newsletters such as Splat, and this is a perfect indirect marketing straight to our consumer base. Afterwards, we can also incorporate physical marketing, brand ambassadors, and even societies to get a, a solid marketing plan. So our USPs, relevance is key here. Lecturers are the ones who write their exams. This means, this means that uh, if you get notes from, say, LSE, it might not be useful in Warwick, even if you're on the same module. So in this case, Stuvia is our main competitor, as they offer a, a search by university function. However, none of our competitors offer both notes and essays, and once we include textbooks as well, we'll have proximity on our side. So as you can see, I'm the badass hustler here, and uh, my, uh, my co-founder, the technical guy, he's, uh, he's come a little close to Dexter, but he, is, he knows A to Z of computing. So what we're looking from you today is your help and advice, and also any contacts you may have from people who've walked down this path before. And uh, remember to sign up to, on the Unibay because the, we are giving away a free t-shirt, one of our sexy green ones. You'll be the only one in the world to have it. And uh, last but not least, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>
Yeah. Working with unions, band ambassadors, and flyers is very expensive. Sorry? Working with unions, yeah. band ambassadors, and flyers is very, very expensive. With flyers, it's not so expensive in terms of, like, uh, yeah, in terms of... How do you track what's working? Sorry? How do you track what's working? Uh, good point. We, we, should, we can implement them in steps to see which one gives us the greatest rise. Is that what you'd suggest? Mm -hmm. So who do you think is your customer, the, the first year students, the third year students? Because I imagine yeah. if I'm about to graduate and leave this place, the it's only thing I don't so want to do is so start, start to selling my essay. I just want to go have some vacation. Ah, but you need money for those vacations, don't you? All those, uh, all those historical trips to Amsterdam. I have a crappy student. I don't think I will buy See, this is another thing, like, it's, it incentivizes people to do well, to make good notes, to make good essays as well. Because, I mean, once you do an essay normally, you know, you just, it's over. So. I'm going to look for the controller I don't know if this essay is actually or good. I don't know exactly, no, that's a good point. So at the beginning, what we'll be doing is taking the essay and, like, finding content ourselves in order to uh, get quite a lot of uh, stuff on there when the site yeah, launches. That's very it, for you. it is, it, at the beginning we'll be doing that and then afterwards uh, we'll, when we ask for the essays to be submitted we'll ask for like a print screen of your module mark as well. So it can be anonymous but uh, we'll say like this essay got this percent. So what is, One more. This, mm -hmm. more question. What is, what is the state of your MVP at this point in time? At what this point in time we've, um, we've got a shared tribe MVP but uh, that's not very uh, flexible. We, we can at any point we can launch a Facebook page sort of thing for spying and selling, but again that's not going to look too good. So uh, we're gathering content at the moment, and uh, my technical co-founder and me we're actually putting it together. Should be ready just before next year starts, so we can capitalize on the freshers. Sorry, next year like in 2016? Oh no no no, uh, next uh, academic year. Yeah. Uh, September. Yeah. September. Yeah. So you're going to take nine months in order to launch an MVP. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> we can incorporate the other MVPs like in the meantime. Very quickly. Can you just show hands, because you're all students in the room, who would buy an essay for £20? No, 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 yes. only if you would really buy an essay. Don't lie, one moment is lying. This isn't How many of you would actually buy an essay from this site? In like forget the price because you guys will be deciding the price yourselves. No, let me ask something. How many have you already bought essays from any sites? Well, we won't tell you t-shirts. <laughs> That's the thing, the current sites don't market properly and the way they do it they don't have <laughs> they don't have this relevance. They don't have the relevance factor, so it's even if you buy the essay, it's not for your module, and the question is going to be similar to what you're doing. So all you're doing is wasting time. We really have to move on, we have to stick to the timetable. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank you for coming. Um, this is probably three minutes. Hi everyone, thank you for coming. I'm Zaid. I'm Freddy. And we're here to present cluster. So uh, during our time in uni, we faced a lot of problems. One of these main problems was basically not being able to connect to everyone that does the same things that you do. What does that mean? Well, basically, if you don't have everyone on Facebook in your course, or on any other platform for that matter, you won't be able to ask them as much as you can. You won't be able to connect with them as much as you can. And that will really hinder the learning process, the virtual <coughs> learning process that we could do otherwise. So. At Cluster, we really believe that learning happens from relevant people. We believe that le relevant information comes from the relevant people. So we are aiming to facilitate learning through a cluster-based platform in order to revolutionize the traditional form. We came up with Cluster as an app, first of all, to capitalize on the mobile uh, mobility. So in Cluster, you can log in, go through your unique cluster, choose a module cluster, and then on the module cluster, you can ask questions, answer questions, and in this case, I want to answer one. So I go on, I look through the answers, and now I want to ask a question. So, 
When I want to ask a question, there's five methods to do it. I choose to type, and I choose a tag, and I upload it. So now I want to spend my points that I acquired. I go to my profile, check it. Maybe I want to see what my friends are doing. So I go to Fadi's profile. <coughs> so the market we're operating in has witnessed a 65% growth in 2014 only, going from 547 million to $1 billion. Well, basically, we want to start with 2.5 million students, but learning happens anytime, any place. So the market is as big as we decided. So the revenue model we're following is a premium. We want to be, we want to give the, the users the ability to download it for free. And if they want to have the premium features, they can do it through in-app purchases. And uh, big data will give our organization we're working with the option to improve their processes, increase efficiency within students and their employees. Um, our competitors come from different backgrounds and sizes. Uh, we have Canodium, Quora, uh, Stack Overflow, Academia, and the team, myself, I'm a third year economic student. Zaid is an engineering and business studies. Between us, we've organized TEDx, um, Arabic Society, and many other com uh, community events. We have two amazing mentors, Annie and Bilal, CEO of uh, Sun Ventures. She has many ideas go from idea to a product. Bilal is, uh, works in Oracle. He, he had many awards. And after the demo day, we're going to go for a 12 week boot camp in London, and then after that we're going to be able to build our MVP, our beta, and then hopefully to scale up, we join an uh, accelerator. There's a quote by Benjamin Franklin we really relate to, which is, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, <coughs> involve me and I'll learn. Thank you. find rather all these people? Do I just post something and they find me or no, basically, go basically the like profiles? Okay, so let's say you're in work students, you have a work email, you log in with your work email and then you can join the clusters of your modules and then if you if you connect with your Facebook or like Instagram or LinkedIn, we're going to suggest you to algorithms like the most relevant clusters to you with the most relevant people. So basically we can say... Based on? Based on the data from uh, Facebook and Instagram. The stuff you're following on Instagram, the stuff you're following on Facebook. So if I am, uh, if I like movies, you introduce me to people that like movies, for example. Mm -hmm. or first of all, people, first of all, want to start with something which has to do with education, but later on, like as I said, like the opportunities are limited. So, so who sets up the clusters to start with? Sorry, who sets up the clusters? Uh, first of all, the MVP we're gonna like run it to like a couple of modules. And uh, later on, we want to see like the option of uh, maybe having the process to the universities, but uh, it can be as well like through like uh, through us, or, like, depending how, how we uh, decide to go <coughs> from your campus to campus. So. What, what big data are you going to be taking advantage of, and, and who are you selling out to, and, and how is it actually going to be used for them? So basically, <coughs> I wish I had the screenshot. It's too late to get it. I just got an email today from <coughs> the engineering department. And we have around seven or eight streams. And of those eight streams, the biggest amount of people responding to the survey that the, you know, the, the department sent them was around 50%. And that's horrible. That's, that's not good enough to signify how many people are satisfied or dissatisfied with their courses or their teaching. So we want to make people use this app, get addicted to it, because it really helps them to get what they want, connect to the people that they need to connect. And through this, we can actually provide to the university real-time data when a pop-up comes up on your uh, app or on the web app. You're going to be able to just, just to quickly fill in a few sets that's of that's information. That's survey, not, not big data. No, yeah, but then we data. gather everything from what's happening on the app, all the interactions. I'm not an expert, so don't, I'm, I'm not going to be able to answer it like you expect me to. But <coughs> we will get there to the point where we will have enough provide for the universities in order for them to improve. It doesn't have to are be... Are you providing the analytic tool or are they going to analyze themselves? What, what, no. I'm, I'm, I'm the university professor. Yeah. What am I getting from you? We just give you the platform to see what your your students are doing, how they're doing. So you're building two products. You're building the app for people to use and you're building another product which is... Obviously product from well. the beginning. Though. Yeah. Obviously from the beginning. Okay. Okay. So guys, the time is over for the Q&A. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Economics at Warwick University, and I'm the founder of KSR.com. At KSR, we believe that everybody wants to become famous. But obviously, nobody wants to get lost in the crowd among millions of songs and videos on the internet. So, how do we reconcile those two points? Well, we've come up with a solution. It is a web platform which anyone can become famous. For instance, we've had this guy who's telling us that he was able to clap with one hand, yet he believed that that what it takes to become a star. So, let's have a quick look at the product. It it, it works very simply. You create an account, you earn points, and then you become a star. It's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of early stage traction, we have reached more than 10,000 members with our first public beta version, and we have now officially launched on Warwick University's campus. Um, and finally, we have secured a very great partnership thanks to my partner, Christian, with 20 big screens all over the UK will be, that will be promoting the stars on the screens. That's a picture from our first book tonight. In terms of market size, well, first of all, just two quick facts. TV talent shows have gathered more than 100 million views, viewers each week, uh, just between the UK and the US. And finally, American Idol has <coughs> turned more than $600 million solely in advertising revenues. But why now? Well, two things. First, we believe that TV talent shows, um, I mean, it's a fact, TV talent shows ratings, despite make, making so much money, are losing ratings uh, compared to online contents. And this brings us to the paradigm shift for a multi entertainment industry that we want to launch, uh, it is Hollywood 2.0. And finally, with Vine and Instagram and all those social media websites, we believe that there is a selfie generation that is willing to share their talent to the world. In terms of competitors and inspiration, just a quick look, we have uh, offline, of course, American Idol, and for the online part, we have YouTube, but they are both inadequate or offline, so I'll take this. Type of business model, very important point. We have two stage, the online part and the offline part. For the online part, well, we have a CPN-driven model. We already have a partnership with a few advertising companies, so we'll be generating eight to nine pounds for each 1,000 views. We also plan to have in-app in -app chases, so people will be able to boost their popularity on the website. And for the offline part, we have, obviously, <coughs> event managing, because our stars have live performances. And from discovering our stars to producing them, we will be marketing our stars. Marketing model, I'm going to go very fast on that. We have right now um, word of mouth and guerrilla marketing. Kristen has been contacting many talent groups to get them to join our <coughs> website. And we have a few pa major partnerships on campus right now with the newspaper of the campus, with the radio. Uh, and what we'd like to do is, of course, to expand those partnerships and to have some sort of celebrity branding. The team, I'm Sam Meads, is Kristen, who will be joining me for the question and answers part. And investment, we aim to raise £150,000 in seed funding. Uh, and this will help us to reach se seven new stars by the end of 2015. Thank you very much. Okay, we are a bit behind schedule, so could we just cut the Q&A to one minute? <laughs> <laughs> so how did you manage to get this traction? Excuse me? How did you manage to get this traction? So, uh, a few things. First of all, we had the first public beta version. It was just advertised on another website I have made. So very light marketing, and this brought us 10,000 members with a very high conversion rate. Are these subscriptions? Uh, no, members. So they joined the website. So they joined the website. Absolutely. How many of them engaged with the website after they joined? So uh, we have, right now, we have 60,000 photos on the website and around um, 2,000 videos on the website. So it is approximately one in five members bought something on the, on the website. One in five? One in five. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so we are adding a minute on the Q&A, and just one minute, so it's three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that you've got some in app. In app purchases. So that's what sort of things are people going to purchase? Okay, so basically this is for our next step. We would like to have uh, a sort of mobile app 
Uh, that's why I, I didn't mention it on, on the slide, but we're going to have a Tinder-like user interface. So basically, people will be able to slide through all the videos of your talents. And the idea is to have, thanks to those uh, credits, boost credits, you know, uh, people will be shown more often on, 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 on the application. So this means that they get more votes and they have a higher chance to become a star. Where do the events take part? Uh, so, yeah, we had the first uh, event in uh, January. It was um, in the atrium of the Students' Union. And we got up the second one uh, just tomorrow, also there. And um, for March and April, we want to expand to country. And I already uh, arranged we're going to have an event in the Casper, in the uh, club. And um, so, yeah, that's the kind of venues we use. Your, your videos are being hosted on YouTube right now. Um, so, we've just made a change to that, actually. Okay. So, indeed, in the past, it was from YouTube. But right now, if you come to our, to our fair, uh, we will be doing a demonstration of that, of that product right now. Uh, you just click on a button and you can record a video from the website. So there is a webcam, webcam flash app that's in so you can... So you're starting all the videos on your own? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So now it's on, on our side. <laughs> we just demonstrated uh, on the pair afterwards. Uh, well, <coughs> just one thing, if you come to our fair, you will see uh, our star tomorrow exclusively for Incubator. Okay, our last startup for the break is Vice. So hi, I'm Mark, this is Louis, and we're presenting Vibe. Vibe is a mobile application to schedule casual meetups with your friends. For example, Louis last week wanted to meet his friends, so he basically created a group chat and wrote a message that looks somehow like this. Okay, so after posting that in the group chat, I got loads of messages just like that here where people are telling me all kinds of stuff if they can meet or not, or where they want to meet, you know, Dirty Duck, 7 o'clock, Lamington, no, 8 o'clock, Julien saying he brings his girlfriend, it's all <laughs> kinds of stuff, yeah? Fr quite frankly, I can't be bothered to read through all of this, and if I actually want to meet for a drink that night, I have to negotiate with all of them and find common ground. But frankly, just for getting a drink, that's too complicated. And that's exactly why we created Vite. Okay, so look, let's look at the demo and let's see how this would look on our platform. So you get, um, yeah, you get an invitation from a friend who wants to get a drink along with other friends. You just tell them um, if, you, if you're coming or not. You put down a suggestion for a time and place that is convenient for you or that you just want to meet up. Then people start voting for it. So each user gets allocated one vote or one suggestion. Basically we do that because consensus is, quick, uh, is, is reached more quickly. On top of that structure we also have a chat uh, which basically enables you to communicate, you know, real time, just with your friends. Um, so, why do we actually think this is a good market to enter? So, most young people um, that are using Facebook are not very satisfied with the virtual social life. I end up stalking people I don't know, I have five hundreds of friends that I don't even know of, and if I see them on the street, I'm not saying the no. So, basically, we see a shift where people start using WhatsApp. So, for example, many young people their social life is now all on WhatsApp in groups. For similar reason, actually, people who are getting invited on Facebook events are not replying anymore on Facebook because it is not private enough. I'm replying, if I'm invited to a party on Facebook, I'm replying to WhatsApp or another, or another messenger, right? Also for similar reason, 78% of young people and young adults are actually, cash, uh, actually um, setting, up meetings on, setting up meetings with friends on messenger apps just like WhatsApp. Sorry, don't have time. Uh, who are our competitors? So basically, we're solving a problem that is now insufficiently solved by group messaging apps. Therefore, we think of our competitors as the main messaging apps, just as WhatsApp, Viber, iMessenger, etc. We also think that those would be great companies that could purchase us. Um, so let's, let's say, for example, you have on, on, the face, on the Facebook app or on the iMessenger app, you just have a function that says Meetup, right? So we think this could be a great exit strategy, only one option, obviously. So about the team, Mark and I, we're in love already for 16 years, we know each other since kindergarten, we have many complementary skills, so Mark is from a tech background, during his gap year before joining Warwick, he worked at a tech startup for one year, right, yeah, as a lead developer, um, I myself come from a sales and business background. Okay, so what do we have? We have a finished prototype, uh, iOS prototype that includes backend, we are also currently in private beta, around 10 people are using it right now, and it's working very successfully, we're still trying to get rid of some bugs. 
what are we looking for? So first of all, mentorship. We're looking for somebody who can give us guidance, and especially for somebody who has experience in mobile app development and high growth, small, uh, high growth uh, mobile startups. Thank you very much. And if you want to. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I skipped the slide. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, basically, we thought about uh, implementing um, implementing location services, so just like four square places, like an API from some other company, right? And basically, um, implementing uh, native advertising in the search function of that. So basically, local businesses that want to lure people in, of like groups of four or five people, right, who spend money. Um, advertise on our app, yeah, and they would pay per click or per suggestion that is given from their business. That's obviously the only one idea we're still currently trying to figure it out. Um, How are you running a beta with just 10 uh, people? Okay, so, um, yeah, you want to? Uh, we want to stay uh, in a small amount of people to, to figure out the box and everything uh, before uh, giving it out to the public and uh, like uh, finishing the application before. But is that too small to test a group? No, you're right. But what we try to do is basically actually find out what people like about it, right? So we're not sure now. We we build a we build a prototype. We know we, we, we made assumptions what people like and we ask them. But right now we're trying to figure out how they're using it. So for example, what we see is that people write a comment, you know, into the suggestions into the suggestion um, into the suggestion uh, post basically. Okay, so we're trying to figure out why do they do that, etc. Right? But basically, we got accepted now on the Apple Store. So n right now we're in open beta. We're trying to go into open beta, where we fill a thousand places. So that's the capacity we have, and we try to do that within Warwick and just you know build the user base within Warwick and try to figure out what we actually want from the product, what the users want from the product. Yeah. Because um, just yeah, right now it's a it's an app you know for casual meet. That's what people need for coffee, right? But perhaps we find out that people actually find it very useful for scheduling meetups with, you know, uh, colleagues at work or something. So we're not sure yet, right? But so is it only for meetings because of the voting thing? Because if I just want to chat with five people and we don't really want to arrange something, the voting thing is useless. No, you're right, you're right. Yeah, I mean, then you use a group chat uh, just uh, on, on WhatsApp or something, right? So that's what we're trying to solve, basically. When I, I use group chats all the time with my flatmates or, you know, people from work or something, right? But if I want to get a drink, you know, and I write in there. So it's only about meetings? It's only about meetings, exactly. It's only about, uh, you know, casual meetups with friends. So do you think people will just have WhatsApp and this and will use it only for the meetings and the rest keep it on WhatsApp? Would you like to have them for everything on your app? Well, uh, it's easier on, on our app to, to overview everything because we have dozens of messages and it's really hard to overlook everything. Yeah, exactly. So. I mean, it would, it would give an advantage uh, basically to, to use the app instead of uh, reading through, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, 40 messages. But obviously you see that all the time, right? Um, companies start with a very specific idea and then they just start, you know, integrating other stuff that is more common, right? So if you look at Snapchat, they started with photos, but then now you can also just, you know, write a comment. Um, into so you the do chat. want to open it basically well, for yeah. other things as well? We, we don't know yet. We want to see, okay, how the users react to it. But like, obviously, <coughs> we would become big, then that would be a possibility, right? Sorry, what's the major difference with the Doodle called Doodle? Okay, so, um, yeah, so Doodle is for work, right? First of all. And second of all, with Doodle, you can actually say, okay, I have time then, then, and then, right? So you can give 10 different suggestions. With us, you can only give one suggestion, and basically, uh, tell people, okay, I can at this time, you know, and basically consensus gets very quickly reached. That's that's the main difference. But also, it's for casual meetups, whereas Doodle is more for, you know, people who are at work or something. Right? You wouldn't use a Doodle uh, if you want to go for coffee, right? Or if you're organizing a party. No, you're right, mate. What you're doing is that you're transposing the potential software. No, exactly, yeah. single Doodle in the application. But I was trying to figure yeah, out yeah, yeah. Thank conceptually you. what is the main difference. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because when the Doodle is it works also one. Okay, yeah, 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 but uh, you're right, basically, <coughs> trying to get the concept into the casual meetup space. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> project is an online photo printing service that's going to create a new way for students to preserve their university memories. Um, so I've been at uni for four years now and it's been the defining experience of my life. 
Um, this is me on Halloween about two years ago. Um, this is me at the sports ball in second year with the netball team. And this is me just last year in Berlin on my year abroad. So as you can see, a lot has happened in these four years and I'm at the end now and I'm feeling really nostalgic. And I realise how important it is to have real tangible memories and not just the ones we have online. Um, and that's where the uni project comes in. So how does it work? You go onto the website and it connects your Facebook profile to the uni project. And from there, your, your um, pictures are automatically um, linked to the, sorry, yeah, your photos are automatically linked and you choose from a set of Polaroid photos or a photo book. The photo book is easy to make. You basically choose a template and then all your pictures are pulled and organised automatically, which is key. You don't really have to do anything. They go into the book in that chronological order. Um, so how are we different? Well, there are obviously photo printing websites at the moment, but the difference is that we know our market. As a student, I realised that chronology is key. We don't just experience random moments, but we experience them in very standardised formats. So when we look back on our timeline, we go back you know, from the first photo to the second one, and that's really important for creating this nostalgic feeling. So this understanding of the market led me to the unique creation process of the books, which um, order the photos in chronological order, not just a drag and drop system, but one that actually makes sense. So while other um, companies overwhelm users with choice and clumsy interfaces, we focus on simplicity and style. And then we come to pricing. Um, I'm able to produce 36 photos, sell them at £9.99, making over a 200% margin, while other competitors like Polarbox charge £13.95 for 30 photos, and I can um, customise mine. Um, so where we're at now, I've validated my core assumptions, I've put 17 orders and I've got over 50 pending, and I also have the production process in place. Um, my next steps is a soft launch in June at the end of this academic year targeting finalists and a big launch targeting freshers and, importantly, their parents at the start of the next academic year. And I also need some funding to develop the software that will be able to organise these photos really effortlessly. Um, so how do we get there? £25,000 covering, <coughs> giving me a 12-month runway covering software development, stock, marketing and advertising, bringing us to the start of the next academic year where we'll have a self-sustaining system and enough money to start filling those orders and focusing on expansion. Um, my vision for the future is to expand to all major UK unis. I also want to diversify the product and also maybe go into new territories. I see us having not only a uni project but a college project, a wedding project, a birthday project and really adding meaning to those photos. Um, so to conclude, yeah, vision for the future, we did that. Uh, yeah, this is the market, 2.3 million students, spending power over 10, point, 10 billion pounds and digital photo printing is growing. Just the last quote there, we do not position ourselves against the trend of online sharing. Instead, we see ourselves in, as a natural extension of it. Thank you. How are you fulfilling your orders? Um, basically, I replicate everything the software would do. So. I have a Facebook page and if users who want me to do this with them add me on Facebook. And then I installed a plugin and downloaded all their photos at once. And then I, all, I just got my um, Windows desktop to order it chronologically. Then I went to Warwick Print, they designed me two templates, the ones that you see in front of you, and then I just drag and drop the photos in. So I basically replicate the software and the users don't know. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I would like to thank you for being here. You have another woman in Britain. Yes. <laughs> I normally feel very lonely, <laughs> as you can see. Yes. Uh, I need to ask you one question. Can you give me the three riskiest assumptions that you validated already? Yeah, um, probably the most risky assumptions is that people actually will pay somebody else to do this because they can do it themselves. And I found not only from gut women, which are the target market, but from men, that they will pay for someone to do this as gifts and for themselves. So that was my core assumption. I didn't know whether it was innovative enough for somebody to pay, but if it's done well and if it's done conveniently, people will pay. Um, the other risky assumptions are that people will choose us over already established brands. Um, and from that, what I found was the way that the photos look, people really like them, the Polaroid style. Other ones are just offering really kind of old-fashioned, um, regular-sized ones. And I guess the riskiest assumption, one of the other <coughs> risky assumptions, was that this is going to be something that um, is scalable. Um, and I contacted web developers in Hong Kong, um, and also here as well, to just talk about the feasibility of 
the organisation process and whether it is that simple and they've assured me that it is. Okay. So when, when do I get this physical? When do you get it? Um, at the moment we're operating on the university to calendar so you can't just go there and order it and it'll be there, there next week. You place an order and the software comes at the end of term, term one, term two and term three. Um, the product comes at the end of term one, term two and term three, sorry. Um, that's for the photo books but for the pictures um, it's a lot quicker once I hit um, about 20 orders for the photos I can then send it to the printers to get my cost. So that's the only thing, I have to make sure I get enough batches so that I can make the cost so cheap. Because right now it costs me 52 pence to print 12 photos, which is a really good price. But I just have to keep that up by increasing the numbers. That 10 billion figure you gave earlier, it's a very pretty number. But how much of that 10 billion is actually spent on, on photos? Yeah, um, the 10 billion pounds is the spending power of students. But what students are spending their money on is obviously going out and enjoying the student experience. A lot of the loan goes on that. Um, I'm, can, can I have a show of hands of people here who have actually printed photos and stuck them on their university wall? So that is the most common university de bedroom decoration and photo books are becoming increasingly more and more um, <coughs> popular. We had Group Book in America recently which we bought last year after just 10 months of trading for 14.5 million US dollars. So I, I guess I want to ask the audience, were those pictures before you came to uni or during your time at university? Just, just hands up if it was during your time at university. <laughs> the only thing I can comment on is the fact is that it's as um, much as being from protectors, and somebody along can come along and replicate something similar. Yeah. Um, so it's the I think protection the, side of things. I, I have been, because you came in and you did a session at the incubator and you did talk about IP, and I asked you whether that was. Something. And it's, I looked into it and if there is a combination of software that we could put together that would automatically order photos in different categories based on tags, there is a combination of software that you could do that could be protectable. Um, and that's what I'm finding is quite useful. People don't just want photos that they, they then have to order, they want to be able to build a story. So there's a potential for software there. But also at the same time, I think brand is really important. And you know, with photos and things like this, it's how well you do it, not just how. And so do you think 25,000 is enough for people to build the brand? Um, I think it is because uh, when I had a Skype with the web developer in Hong Kong, he said it would cost about £7,000 to make this. And it's not so much the coding that is difficult, but the um, making sure the user interface is as simple as possible. So do you think brand? brand. Uh, so. Um, I think I have a lot of experience with branding. Um, I launched my own online retail business when I was 16 years old um, and that was upscale and vintage clothing. I've been a campaign manager for a, um, a policy startup in, in London as well where we launched a campaign on the police and crime commission. So what would you do on campus to promote service and create awareness? Um, I want to have like a, a marketing campaign that uses this Polaroid this Polaroid image, give those away for free. Um, basically free startup apps. It's the kind of thing that once your friend has it, people will want to be to do that as well. And I also want to add a kind of social element to the books. So instead of it just being a personal photo book, your friends could send you hidden messages that you wouldn't read until you ordered the book, telling you how much they enjoyed their time at uni with you. So kind of bu building up to sort of American yearbook style. Thank you. Good question from the time I'm thinking, once the caption goes here, you can actually have a, where you have the same photo and all your friends put a caption on in the competition and that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. So I'll move that. Thank you. you. <laughs>
This digital is a platform that allows artists to convey design concepts by photos. Convey design photo, convey design uh, uh, concept by photos. <laughs> okay, so why did we come up with this idea? I was a designer for a number of years. I literally spent 25 hours a day working on our project. 25 hours. <laughs> <laughs> after our work had been done, we after after, after our work had been done, we didn't really get a chance to, to exhibit our work and to express our design <coughs> concepts to the public. The thing is, in this particular industry, if nobody knows you, then you fail. That's exactly what big detail can change. With big detail, you simply take a photo of your works and then post it on with another photo of your design concept. After that, just wait for the feedback from the public to see whether or not your design concepts have, have been fully expressed. If you want more professional feedback, we we'll introduce a new feature for you. That is called micro-consulting. The micro-consulting system allows users to ask for <laughs> professional feedback from the industrial experts. <coughs> when we are talking about micro-consulting, we are actually referring to the ratings themselves. That's also our mainstream of revenue. The market size, 170,000 are students in the UK. In average, they are, every student has a thousand pounds per for their spare money per month. So we are aiming to get 3% from them to help them to promote themselves. So our market size is 5 million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> our team, Amit, he's not here today because he's presenting Pic Detail in Mobile World Congress in Barcelona and looking for further opportunities and uh, distribution channels. So also he's the alumnus of Oxygen Accelerator. This is Andre. The designer in the team, I'm studying innovation and entrepreneurship at work, like you guys. <laughs> and I work, for, uh, for, I work for four years in design industry. I'm Veronica. <coughs> I'm studying in e-business management and with three years work experience in marketing. Most importantly, we are the student we, we were the students in University <coughs> of the Arts London. So we <coughs> we got advantage <coughs> in the connections. So today in this stage we are looking for 100,000 pounds as seed funding. To take us to go further. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, our prototype will be launched in two months. <coughs> no, not two months, too long. <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> 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 two weeks. Uh, two weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> see what happens to our landing page and check our progress. We are big detail. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Sorry, you're in a microphone. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, you, everyone, every user, you can use the, the platform as a premium. Then you can um, switch it on your micro consulting system. So everyone can ask for consulting from you. When we call it micro consulting. Okay, right. Yeah. So, again, the micro consulting is a very It's easy, but sometimes you need. Um, just the really professional feedback from the powerful people in that uh, specific industry. Where did you get the figure from that every student has 1,000 pounds? Oh, yeah. that's, that's a good question. Thank you. Per month. Yeah, that, thank you for the question. But again, we are alone now here in the bus to ask London. I don't know if you could. Yeah, in Britain. Then, yeah, so we actually we interviewed with 80, 80 students there. and. Uh, but that's the, the, the figure actually is a little bit biased because they're all for our, our friends. And we ask them like the question about this. 
So that's calculated as the average of the our chance are the poorest students. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but again, they have a lot of costs, right? But again, the ask you them, though. Mm -hmm. they, they don't get more money from, from the student loans and the etc. So they get the same amount of money everyone else does, right? And they have more costs because they need to buy all the hardware uh, and etc. themselves. <coughs> I've just never met an art student that has one case to be able to care for Our sample is consists of University of Arts London and a Royal College of Arts and the student needs are consist uh, seventy percent are foreigners. And the foreigners they dollars from the University of like Arts of London. These two are one hundred and seventy thousand? 170,000, that's um, the whole ask you, how cool are these universities? No, 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 just all the yeah, yeah. yeah, so one, what we're trying to say is that the rest of the economy is the rest of the you don't have the one case per month. Um, so we're going to start with the students in London first. Yeah, I mean, ask and design students in London first. Now, there were three, three uh, the most important ask uh, schools in London. That's the best of three in the UK. Now we just have really such that. How is this different than being handed? Sorry? How is this different than being handed? Being handed is all the time where I can upload my 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 work and get the back or whatever. And so it's going to be going for a long, long time. Being handed is going to be five by dollars for eight million. How is that different? Or even dribble. Or boom. There you go. Thank you very much for reminding me. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> um, basically, we, uh, I think we are not really um, competing with that, that kind of uh, platforms. I think that our main um, competitors are free, just a free uh, mainstream of social media, like first one is Instagram, the second one is Pinterest, the third, the third one is the most important one, called Allo. Mm -hmm. The Allo is just the, the new launch one, and they launched in, um, they just launched it like about half a year ago, and they got more than 5.5 million pounds just because they target an, uh, the art and science. Uh, are you targeting <coughs> more than art people? Instagram and Pinterest, I use it. I, I don't have any expertise in art. Yes. So, anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, so my name is Carlos, I'm the founder of Graduate Recruitment Network, and I'd like to you to think about it as UCAS, but for jobs and internships. So last year, like thousands of students, uh, I decided to apply to internships myself and I applied to 17 companies. And for each company I applied to, I had to fill out the same repetitive information. So that's personal details, contact details, <coughs> educational history, grades, work experiences, languages, and CV. <coughs> and this was over and over and over and over again. At Graduate Recruitment Network, we want to revolutionize the current application process to make it less repetitive and time consuming. We want to create the first common application platform from which students can apply directly to jobs and internships. So there are four simple steps. First of all, you create a profile. Instead of filling out your information over and over again, you create one profile with which you can apply to all internships. You then use our search engine to look for different jobs and internships you're interested in. You then have to, once you've decided what companies you want to apply to, you have to fill out the supplement. Each company will have a different supplement, and this will typically be a cover letter or competency-based questions. We then make it very easy for students to track their applications from one dashboard and see the different progress of their applications. This must be interviews or numerical tests. So what is our business model? We plan on generating revenue in three different ways. First of all, universities. Universities want students to apply to jobs and internships, but they don't want them to spend a lot of time applying. That's why they're interested in their students using our platform. So only students studying at partner universities will be able to use our platform free of charge. We will also be using employers to generate <coughs> revenue. So employers, small and large, will have to pay an annual fee to be on our platform. Lastly, we'll be using advertising to generate additional revenue. <coughs> so where are we and what's the road ahead? So we talked to over 100 students and they're all very interested about the idea. 
They agree that they spend too much time applying to internships. It's time consuming and it's too repetitive. They want a simpler way to apply to these companies and they want to spend less time doing so. We've also talked to over 20 companies, mainly investment banks and consultancy firms, and they're also interested in our idea. And also, during the last few weeks, we've been able to finish our prototype. But there's a long road ahead. In the next few weeks, we want to launch our landing page, and we want to get 10,000 student signups. We believe this will be the final push to get employers on board. Also, I'm looking for a technical co-founder, given that right now I'm a solo founder, and I'm also looking for some mentorship advice. Thank you very much. Well, to be honest, there's several benefits to the employers themselves. Um, first of all, they'll be able to attract um, a, a wider range of people <coughs> with different backgrounds. Um, and also, I think the most important part of this is that we're going to provide data analytics to, company, to the big employers. So, for example, these big employers right now, they don't know the number of students applying from Warwick. They don't know how many are management students, how many are second year <coughs> students, how many are European, and so on. We're going to provide this data analytics. Most of them don't have the... But don't you the provide tools. this information? We're gonna, plan? Well, I mean, yeah. they have this information, but they haven't got data analytics to actually break down this information. Yeah, there is something that, that does that. Actually, most of them, I've talked to them. Which and one? most of them, for example, Nomura, Deutsche Bank, um, EY, PwC, they all agree that their data analytics platforms right now are not up to standard. They have got some sort of metrics. You talked to recruiters at PwC and they said that. Yeah, spring with the PwC. Okay. <laughs> they, all agree, they all agree that they have data analytics and they have metrics, but it doesn't give them it doesn't give them meaningful information, and they can't extract this information um, accurately with the applications that they get. So they think that they agree that the actually it was their suggestion. When I was thinking about this idea, I never thought about providing data analytics um, until one of the employers actually. Um, mentioned that they didn't have very powerful data analytics and that it would be great for them. I don't know why do I want more people applying to my company? Whatever I rather not have just the ones that actually want to work in my company apply? I mean, you're still going to get the people who really want to apply because... Yeah, but now I have to go through extra fat. I have to go through the ones that don't really care and they're just using all the packages to make it easier and the ones that actually really do care. So my, my, my precious time is in the way now. Well, to be honest, as I said before, employers will be able to ask for a supplement. And this will usually be a cover letter or it can be also competency-based questions. I have to read all the cover letters now to find the ones that actually want to apply. So that's yeah, well, that's their job, to actually select the best. <laughs> yeah, but the, the job is to do it as fast as possible. Their job is to select the best people possible to work in their company because most of these companies are human capital companies and what they depend on is actually getting the best people on board and you'd be surprised to know that actually these big companies are having big difficulties in finding um, clever people who want to apply and who also have the motivation to apply. So actually there is a big demand for students and also more importantly there's a big demand for students from wider backgrounds, minority backgrounds. Um, and this is something which isn't being fulfilled at the moment, as most applicants are the stereotypical um, applicants from, from top universities. Will universities and employers pay? To be honest, I haven't got concrete figures right now. I think it's too early to actually talk about numbers. Um, the employers I'm talking to right now uh, what I've offered them as an incentive to join is for them to have, um, they have to basically have to pay no fees. So the employers I'm talking to will never have to pay any fees, and that's incentive I'm giving them to actually attract them and, and get them on the platform. Um, after the, the first year of, of operations, when I have several employers on board, I will start charging annual fees. And um, I mean, I've talked to people and around 50, 70,000 uh, pounds a, a year for each employer. It also depends on the size of the employer. So some employers, the big ones, um, will have to pay more than obviously smaller employers who are, who are recruiting less students. Thank you very much. The next startup is going to be Ethan Meeks. So thanks for being that tonight. So we'd love to for the first, really first time presenting techniques.
So what is it in it? It in meat is a not, not coming mobile application which will basically bring social into food. So <coughs> before going further in the concept, I'm going to present you the team. So we can, um, so we've got the hipster, Louis, the two of us are really hardworking, uh, Nicola and myself. And after we've got uh, uh, Daryl, the hacker, finalist of uh, Microsoft Imagine Cup two years ago. So we came with a problem. Uh, as students, we're always looking um, for some characteristic when we're having a meal. What are they? First, we don't like to eat alone. We always like to be surrounded by, uh, with, with other people. Sorry. Second, we afford saver. We don't like to spend too much looking. Third, we like meals which are budget friendly. We don't like to spend too much money. And to finish, we, like, we, we never plan a meal three or four weeks before. We like some flexibility and short notice. That's why we came with the Eat and Meat. So the Eat and Meat idea and application aims to solve all these issues, taking into account the student characteristics. It basically allows the user to visit quickly and easily on a map all its friends around and other people which are up to share a meal. This is made through a simple and inbuilt messaging service, providing, um, re providing uh, suggestions for restaurants and recipes around from the best of this in time. This is making way easier the planning of meals for students. So how it's meet is going to generate revenue thanks to three main channels. The first one being uh, restaurant partnerships. So restaurants are going to offer on a punctual basis uh, discount for students, which are always going to be interesting for this, which are getting commission to us. Also with uh, sponsor establishments, paying a premium fee to appear on top of the suggestions of different restaurants and recipes built around. And finally, we can generate analytics and data which can be resale to some, big of, to some of the big industry players. Okay, so why Eat Meat is unique? So at Eat and Meat, we think there is a mismatch in the market. On one side, you have messaging and social networks. On the other side, you have food dedicated solutions providing inspiration. Eat and Meat is bringing these two aspects together for the very first time. So what's our market? So according to our research, students in the UK are allocating about 37 pounds a week in food expenses, including uh, restaurant expenses and groceries uh, expenses. There are about 2.3 million students uh, at uni in the UK. So the world market for the moment is more than 4 billion pounds. On a world perspective, uh, this figure is expected to double, like the number of students uh, studying at uni is expected to double from now to 2025. So thank you for having us. Uh, we will be really happy if you can visit us at our start to eat and meet. Thank you. Generally, how it works. I go and I order my meal from where? Who is doing the delivery? Where do I pick it up? Okay, so there is no delivery. You either cook or go to restaurants. Sorry, sorry? You either cook or go to restaurants, thanks to recipe you provide. And the main thing is about seeing your friends instantly around and who's up for me. You know, currently, students will have to message all their friends to say, hey, where you are, do you want to a meal? This on a daily basis. So you basically open the app and see everyone's available for me around based on your Facebook friends. You can sign up on Facebook. And you can then directly message them through the app. Knowing the ability to and you can be online or offline. So well, you can not use the app of the other startup to meet up. No, yes. definitely. <laughs> 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 Then we don't know if they're available yet or not. So we don't want to plan something, it's really on an instant basis. We always see that uh, all our friends and some people to know, see there of the library, they're not planning days before a special dinner. Yeah, they're not planning days before, they're planning like hours before, half an hour before. Yeah, that's right. But you go online when you're available for lunch, and like, I don't know, I've got my circle of friends and 10 close friends, we all in the dip. I just see like, okay, uh, Maxence is available to eat now, just, okay, I'll message him, what do you want? What do you have in your fridge? And, we can suggest recipes, we're not imposing them, we suggest. Otherwise, we have the, like Nicola said, the best restaurants in town rated, and um, which can send our photos. So basically, you arrange a meetup to eat, and you either go to restaurants or you meet and cook it yourselves. Yeah, exactly. true. We provide extensive availability yeah. information of your friends around. Once you form the group of people who is going to eat, you are offered the suggestion to either eat, and uh, to meet up and cook or to go to a restaurant. If you decide to um, meet up and cook, it will consider the ingredients in the peoples, for example, if we, are for going to, we decide that we're going to cook, it will consider the ingredients that we have, and uh, using a recommendation system, an algorithm which I'm writing, um, it will um, it suggest the recipes which would be viable to what we have uh, in the fridge. And if, on the other hand, it uses a restaurant, it will consider the, um, the restaurant in the location, which we would like to um, discuss deals with them so that they can offer, uh, they can offer discounts. And if the 
if the group of people will go there to eat and, and they will have uh, a voucher from Italy. I don't know if that made it clear. Yeah. No, I got the restaurant part and maybe yeah. you could have this stuff because people were coming <coughs> to the app for the restaurant, but I don't really get any value of how, why to plan all these things in order to cook it. It brings more hassle it's to me if I have to arrange five to people them. ingredients, who's going to cook what, where to meet it, where to do it. You don't need to plan anything. Like you see your friends around on the map, you can select them, you go on a chat, and then you have two options, either restaurants or either recipes. In function of what you want, of what your friends want, you can adapt, you can uh, say yes for a restaurant, like you, c you will see the restaurant around, or the ton of the recipes, and in function of what you want, like so there's no planning. So you're creating three products. You're creating the mapping tool, you're creating the app sharing tool, and then you're creating the interface that allows them to... Yeah, to it's, it's to actually, but we're trying to, under to, to provide <laughs> one... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm using Google Maps. It should be like Foursquare plus WhatsApp plus like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we really want to we want for like one set of food, we want to have meal. Because currently, if you want to have meal, you're going to have a good restaurant, but you cannot arrange with transparency, and so you're going to get on the recipes website, especially to get suggestions for you. want to plan your app just before you do it, you want to organize with friends and get all the same ideas in one place. Can I ask, where else can we use that? Especially at uni first, then we want no, to expand. No, no, no. You thought about a very niche market that we were doing, which is the food market, and maybe not a food. You have all these features, you want application platform, whatever you want to use. Where else, in what for else, can we use this platform? Yeah, we can. I need you to start thinking about it. Yeah, we of, of, of course, now, nowadays, what people want is not a. I could just take the example if you want to rent a car. Uh, you don't. You don't want to know if you can go to a car, which is like uh, two kilometers uh, down down your town, to rent a car. You want to know like uh, if your neighbor just in front of, just in front of your house can uh, lend you something or don't know just give give you his bike for the day. So we 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 could expense. We, we're beginning with food, but we could expense with other other material. And something uh, similar, which. Um which I was, which, which was, uh, was something I was, was working on back at home, and was um, carpooling. That way. So if I want to carpool, I'll just find people who are nearby and want to go somewhere, and it will work out groups depending on. Last question way. quickly: How many are engineers? How many are business people? Um, three business people, one engineer. Three business, one engineer. So one engineer is going to build three different products. Um, I'm working on it at the moment. It's going okay. Some of the